Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, for 43. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC. Modern Bonding Practice. With the advent of powerful computers has come the responsibility of analyzing data much more quickly and thoroughly and in terms of the general economic principles of Leontief input-output matrix analysis. C. Wassily Leontief, Studies in the Structure of the American Economy, and Wassily Leontief, The World Economy in the Year 2000 in Scientific American, September 1980. Wassily Leontief was the 1973 Nobel Prize winner in economics. In the modern system of wagering, as applied to insurance and malpractice bonding, several political legal economic factors including legislation, judication, execution, enforcement, and the behavior of the general public are treated mathematically as separate industries within the legal system, with the result that these industries can be interrelated be a system of feedback equations and computations, the individual workings and behavior of each industry can be much more closely monitored, and the behavior of the government and public can be predicted and manipulated. This amounts to the application of feedback computing to reliable gambling on the economic success or outcome of any given statute or legal process. It results in a scientific bonding system, and results in the transfer of the power and authority of government over to the bonding companies where it belongs if governments do not want to behave themselves. Money talks, bonding controls. The bonding problem as human population increases and mutual human tolerance decreases, municipal corporations tend to become less sensitive to individual human needs and tend to become more antisocial toward the public. It has been put crudely that municipal corporations become slaughterhouse operations with law enforcement officers running the sledgehammer department. Judges ignore the rights of the people and legislators generate heaps of laws without perfecting the ones already existing to make them fit for bonding. Defective statutes and defective legal processes become an invitation for every sort of official malpractice and malfeasance including economic oppression, and the public, in retaliation, begins suing for every injury, putting the heat on the bonding companies. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 543. The solution. In order to survive in the commercial marketplace, the smaller bonding companies have had to become more selective and scientific in their bonding practice. In the past, bonding was based on marketing a bond which covered a broad aggregate of bondable objects, acts and persons. When a large claim was made against a small bonding company, the claim could bankrupt the small company especially if the company could not collect its corresponding funds from the parent bonding underwriter. By partitioning the coverage better, and be excluding persons of an antisocial disposition, the claims could be minimized, thus favoring solvency of the bonding company. In the old aggregate system, an antisocial enforcement officer operating on an unbounded statute using an unbonded enforcement process could create a monstrous civil rights or constitutional claim against the bonding company which was underwriting the general bond on the municipal corporation for which the officer worked. In order to maintain credibility in the bonding marketplace, the bonding company would have to pay off the claim against the bond even though the official act was criminal instead of civil. Birds of one feather. If in addition, the municipal corporation was operated by an antisocial office staff, it would tend to support, and retain in employment, the antisocial enforcement officer rather than the more civilized officers on the staff, if for no other reason than because an antisocial officer was more likely to bully the public into dropping malpractice suits and paying revenue into the corporate coffers, and thereby keep the corporate paychecks coming. When such an antisocial corporation would get sued, as inevitably would happen, the bonding company working under the old system of aggregate bonding, would get ripped to shreds, perhaps even bankrupted. Of course, the injured bonding company would tell the municipal corporation to take its business elsewhere, and the next bonding company, being somewhat more cautious, might refuse to bond the corporation, or ask a larger premium to cover the gambling risk. 
Ultimately the municipal corporation would not be able to buy a bond due to its track record and the consequent high cost of bonding, with the result that the municipal corporation would resort to what is called self-bonding. In the past, the state incorporation laws have required all corporations engaged in business potentially hazardous to the public safety, health and welfare, to be bonded against public accident and the malpractice of their officers, but more recently self-bonding has become a state-condoned option extended to municipal corporations to insulate them against prosecution for violation of the, the Uniform Bonding Code, UBC, version 2.0, December 2006, 6.43. General state incorporation laws which demand public hazard licensing and bonding for all corporations. A corporation that is self-bonded is a limited, liability, corporation, limited, with a low ceiling of limited liability. The term, self-bonded, is a fraudulent misrepresentation of the corporate liability status. It says in effect that the payment of the commercial debts of the corporation will take second place to the payment of the malpractice obligations of the corporations. Furthermore, self-bonding cannot possibly be expected to cover the anti-civil rights and anti-constitutional malpractice potential of today's modern antisocial municipal corporations. Simply put, self-bonding is no bonding, it is corporate limited liability misrepresentation and fraud. Bonding is valid only when it is provided by an independent third-party money wagering pool with no conflict of interest and no possibility of the bonded party dipping into the till. In order to pull out of the municipal corporate bonding rat race, the smaller bonding companies have had to adopt a set of bonding policies aimed at segregation, partitioning, and making more certain, their liabilities in the bonding marketplace. The following excerpts from the Uniform Bonding Code contains a presentation of those policies. Claims access pursuant to civil rights law. Improper enforcements which run counter to the US Constitution can involve as many as 35, 35, violations of the provisions of the United States Constitution valued per 18 USC 241, conspiracy against rights, at $10,000 per constitutional violation per offence, per officer, per injured party when the officer is acting as a part of a law enforcement agency effort. The civil value is therefore approximately $350,000 per enforcement offence, per enforcement officer, per injured party. The statutes enabling the suit and civil claim are part of the Federal Civil Rights Act of 1871. 42 USC 1983, 1985, 1986, these statutes guarantee, among other things, the equal protection of the law for racial minority groups. Although the argument is commonly raised that these statutes apply only to racial minority population groups, they actually apply to racial discrimination regardless of the race and regardless of the population of the group. The application of these equal protection statutes to only racial minority population groups would create a racial discrimination against racial majority population groups, and hence impose a justice minority situation upon the racial majority population groups. But this would make the racial minority statutes applicable to a majority race, because the intended purpose of the statute is to eliminate the prejudicial discrimination of the law and its. The Uniform Bonding Code, UBC version 2.0, December 2006, 743. Enforcement, not to favor any specific race, color, creed, religious faith, sect or population group, be it small or large. The issue can be made even clearer by a second very appropriate example. The Legal Professions Labor Union, the Bar Association, was established immediately after the Civil War to substitute a system of general slavery to replace the old system of black slavery, by guaranteeing a monopoly of the courts for attorneys, judges, and municipal corporations, city, county, and state. This labor union, the Bar Association, has forbidden anyone but union, bar, attorneys to give legal advice, and has prevented anyone from being assisted in court by a non-union lawyer or by a non-lawyer thus converting the courts into closed union shops. 
This corresponds to pre-Civil War United States wherein blacks were not taught to read and were not allowed to get a public education lest they become strong enough persons to speak out against their oppression and overthrow their slave masters. The unionization of the legal system by the Bar Association makes the people individually, and the public as a whole, a legal justice minority group with access to the Civil Rights Act of 1871 and to 42 U.S.C. 1983. 1985 and 1986. The Bar Association Act in violation of antitrust and anti-monopoly laws of the U.S. Organized crime in government. Government officials maintain control of the courts by licensing lawyers and by forbidding the common citizens to practice law or give legal advice, three phrases which have never been adequately defined for any statute. To protect government dominance, Law schools are the only schools allowed to teach law, and specifically safe law, atonement. To protect malfeasance, attorneys are forbidden to file criminal complaints against malfeasance officials, officer and clerks and against officers of other corporations. If they disobey, they lose their license to practice law. Similarly, when the citizen files a criminal complaint against a public official, the prosecutor is expected to protect the public official from prosecution for official malfeasance by exercising some mystical doctrine of selective prosecution, an act of misprision of crime, which is nothing more or less than an excuse for legal prejudice to issue from the prosecutor's office. Calculated to overthrow the public's legal redress against official malfeasance. 